Here you can see during the ablation catheter, uh, during the ablation, interestingly, patient developed a lot of nice PVCs. And I've been following this patient for several months and he's doing pretty well. So there are no more PVCs at the end. So another example of the ablation of PVC, this time originating, again, originating from the right ventricle. But I want to show you how ice is so crucial to see this stuff. Look at this, RA, RV, and RVOT, and this is my ablation catheter. You shouldn't be satisfied with this view. Why? You see the ablation catheter, but you have no idea where your ablation catheter is touching, where it is. You just know that it is at the base of the RVOT, but you don't exactly know what it is. Don't be satisfied. This is my ice catheter. Why shouldn't I just go ahead and put this ice catheter inside the RV by performing anterior tilt? And as soon as I performed the anterior tilt, I was able to see this is my ablation catheter. And you can appreciate the ablation catheter was right by that papillary muscle inside the RV. And I was about 20, 25 milliseconds early, but I said, let me go to the other side of it because we had a small R wave on the unit. And then as soon as I put my ablation catheter on the other side of it, I was able to get uh, another 10 millisecond, er millisecond earlier and uh, there was no R wave on the uni, and this uh, happened to be a very good, very successful procedure. Actually, this was a redo procedure from another hospital. Um, uh, it was noted that they had done it in the RVOT, but if you notice here, this is way at the base of the RVOT, and you can see that the catheter is sitting very nicely snug there. How about the catheter ablation of the coronary cusps? If you are doing the coronary cusp, so you're gonna advance your ablation catheter straight towards the coronary cusp. You are not gonna perform a candy cane in the uh, you know, descending aorta as I'm gonna show you next. You're just gonna go straight towards the coronary cusp. Here you can see the ablation catheter is right there. So my eyes is showing the non-coronary cusp and you show the left coronary cusp, and this is the left main. So if you clock the eyes, you always see the left coronary cusp in the kind of home view, but you have done a little bit advanced. You see your eyes catheter close to the aorta. So on the top, it is always non-coronary cusp. Why? Because the septum is here, the hiss is here. But if you can't clock your eyes at that view, you're gonna see the um, right coronary cusp. This is, we had clocked it and we saw the left coronary cusp. We can also see that short view from the RV and short axis. This is again, another left, you can see the very left main here, and you can put the color Doppler and being able to see the color Doppler across the left main. You can also see it from the left atrium. I uh, show, showed you just um, uh, earlier today that if you put the eyes inside the left atrium, you can also see the left atrial appendage here again. You can see the LAD and CERC. And if you go down counterclock it, you would be able to see the left main come into the view. Right there. Why is it important to see them? Because you cannot put your ablation catheter there and tag it on your mapping system so that you know that how much away from it, uh, you, so you don't need to do an angiogram. So no non-coronary cusp here, we counterclock the ice a little bit. So you see that we see the tricuspid valve stuff. And now you're gonna see the right coronary cusp. The other one was non-coronary cusp and left coronary cusp. So here you can see the right RCA here. And again, as we mentioned, if you go ahead and advance your ablation catheter towards this RCA, you can tag it on your mapping system here. Just quickly put it at the ostium for a second or so, tag it on the mapping system. And believe me, I have seen uh, some physician actually, they try to do the U curve in, in this area and very likely there is a likely that you can dissect this uh, arteries and stuff. So this may happen. So you, if you are very careful and nice, look at it, you can just put it and tag it. So here you can see a short axis view Non-coronary cusp. Why is it non-coronary cusp? Because the septum is here. You don't need to memorize it. Why this is left coronary cusp? Because left atrial appendage and left atrium is here. 
So the remainder for I, remaining one is going to be the right coronary cause. Where is my ablation catheter here? Actually, here I just performed a little bit more clockwise rotation, and I see the non-coronary cause and the right coronary cause. And my ablation catheter was in the right coronary cause, such as here, right there. I'm sorry, it, it, it is a right coronary cause. My ablation was in left coronary cause. And then here you can see the ablation is at the junction of the left and the right coronary cause. Here you can see the ablation is at the junction of the left and actually non-coronary cause. And next you are gonna see the ablation catheter actually is in the non-coronary cause, which of course, as we know, you know, atrial tachycardia comes from that very area. So this was a, actually a patient with atrial tachycardia coming from the non-coronary cause. And you can appreciate that ablation catheter is inside the non-coronary cause. Here you can see the non-coronary cause. This is the ablation catheter, and this is atrial tachycardia. And we were very early on the ablation catheter. And as soon as we start burning, so the atrial tachycardia terminated into uh, sinus rhythm. Yeah, you can see that <clears throat> no more atrial tachycardia. So uh, last, uh, we are going to talk about um, ablation of the uh, LVPVCs. Uh, either you can go retrograde approach, of course, or anterograde approach, depending on where you think your PVCs are. But I almost always perform the U-curve and candy cane inside the descending aorta. I believe it is much safer to do so. How do I know that I performed it? I am able to see that green mark goes down. So when I'm advancing towards the ascending aorta, I'm going to be able to see this tip of the ablation catheter looking up, means that there is going to be a U-curve ahead of it. So another example in a different patient, again, you can see that ablation catheter is going up. You're going to be able to perform you know, U-curve here, and you're going to see that one, two, three, four, is going to become four, three, two, one. So as I'm going to advance this, here you can see that it's coming towards the ascending aorta, and of course you would be able to see through your ice image that this catheter goes. You can prolapse the catheter uh, through the aortic valve into the left ventricle. You can see it right there. So PVC from endocardial part of the LV summit. This is one case I would like to show you. You can appreciate that this is a PVC. It is a nice R wave on V1, 2, 3 wave are positive. And if you look at this, you can appreciate that this is here. This is ice view of it, and you can, let's compare them with this. Um, this image was adapted from uh, McAlpine, and uh, it is a courtesy of Dr. Uh, Tong, uh, he gave it to me. So this is aorta, aortic valve, pulmonary artery, LV, and you can appreciate here that this is the left main. So you can see the pulmonary artery here, you can see the left main, so you know that that is the territory of the LV summit, but that is going to be endocardial aspect. This is a very area of the left main. This is a very left main without any color. Here you can see that ablation catheter goes in. I, per, I go ahead and perform a U-curve, come back and sit right under the left coronary cusp right here. So if I want to just go then compare these two images, you can appreciate this is ablation catheter, this is ablation catheter. This is that triangle of the, you know, epicardial aspect of it. But here we are doing the endocardial aspect of it. We are just doing the, in the, under the left uh, sinus of Valsalva. Here you can see this is ablation catheter and we are performing, you know, ablation. And here, this is the PVC and we just went RF on here. And interesting, we didn't have um, uh, many beats, uh, just, you know, no, 
PVCs after that, and you see that PVC was eliminated. You can see that here, and you can see that how this tissue becomes white here. So it means that, you know, I'm very nicely snuck with the tissue. You have to make those changes in the tissue wall, especially in the LV, to be able to get rid of these PVCs. Look at this. You can see how nice this lesion is. And, and you can see that ablation catheter is very snug with the tissue. Of course, you can release the curve and go straight on top of it and touch it this way. And here you can see that my catheter is straight going. So I pull the curve back, I release the curve and pulled it back. So this is one case of ablation of PVC from uh, aortomitral continuity. For this one, usually, as you know, we go retrograde, but for this one, I show you why I had to go uh, anti-grade through the mitral valve. Here you can see that this is a left atrium. This is a left ventricle. This is a mitral valve annuloplasty, and this is my ablation catheter going through from the left atrium through the mitral valve LV here. And actually the reason I went anti-grade because this was a mechanical aortic valve. So as you notice here, I'm just right under the mechanical aortic valve, but I have a distance. I see that I'm not touching it. So it, is, it makes it very clear that you can see how close I am to the aortic valve. You can appreciate that this is a St. Jude mechanical, mechanical aortic valve, but, and that's my ablation catheter. I'm very close to it, but I'm not touching it. And here, this is my ablation catheter. And then you can see that as soon as I move the ablation catheter, I release the curve. You can see that lesion formation here, which was right by the aortic valve, mitral valve, so aortomitral continuity happened to be a mechanical aortic valve. And lastly, we are gonna talk about um, a PVC ablation of papillary muscles. Uh, this is a retrograde approach. Um, I'm gonna show you first. So to visualize the papillary muscle, of course, we wanna place the ice catheter again inside the right ventricle. As soon as we go to the right ventricle, you release the anterior curve. You wanna make sure, make sure it is neutral and you go ahead and clock this ice catheter. The first one you're gonna see would be the posterior medial pap muscle because it is on the posterior wall. If you clock your eyes a little bit more, you're gonna see what? You're gonna see the anterior lateral pap muscle because it is not on the posterior wall. It is, there is a distance between that and the posterior wall. That is a septum. So if you prefer again, you can do the right and left uh, toggle the, you know, to toggle the mirror image, you can press the left right and left button. Again, the reason I do it, I'm used to it. Uh, you may not wanna do it if you are not used to it, but the reason I do it, uh, when you be used to read, uh, you know, parasternal long axis view of the 2D echo, this reminds me of that. So I understand the view a little bit better, LA, mitral valve, LV, and pap muscle. And here you can see that that is anterolateral pap muscle. But as we all know, it's not a good option to go retrograde for this anterolateral pap muscle. Why? Because it is not gonna be sitting. You see that my catheter, there is a distance between the catheter and the pap muscle. It is not snug on the very tissue. You can see it's just playing. It's just touching and coming back. So it is not snug on the tissue. And we all know perhaps the best uh, approach would be the transeptal approach for the antero, uh, uh, <coughs> anterolateral axillary pathway, sorry. So here, left atrium, mitral valve, you can see that ablation cat is going through the mitral valve. Here you 